My fellow Ambazonians, um, good morning. This is Dr. Cho Ayaba. I have been up a long period of time looking into different issues that have come to my attention. Most of them are propaganda materials of the barbarians. I have told Cameroon that this is a new generation, this is a new era. All through its history, it has defeated its enemies using a series of methods. First, it has supplied excessive violence. It has rejected the existence of any problem. Then it has created its own problem, recruited its own actors, discussed with them, solved a problem it has created, ignoring the real problem. It has criminalized actors, jailed them, exiled some, use bribery and corruption to integrate others into its own circle. And then it has hope that time will work for its interests. It has mostly worked until this generation. This morning, I have reviewed an article in the Post newspaper. I have scripted the response, which is being directed to the Post. I have also read a propaganda piece circulating, targeting the state of Bui. And we all must have watched a video in the past days claiming to be the killing of Ambazonian soldiers who eliminated the barbarians in Mainu. I will start with this last, last point. I want to notify you people that the video being circulated is actually the video of the killing of General Saigon of Ngokitungya. More importantly, the reason why they are circulating that video is to show the population of Mainu that they can react quickly to our attacks and that they can undermine the regrouping of Ambazonian soldiers. Be reminded that after the Manu attack, they mobilized close to 15 ammo cars and took them into Manu. Reason also is a military strategy of one deterrence, demonstration of presence, demonstration of force, demonstration of assurance to be able to win the mindset of the population that they are in charge when all those failed they now took the video of the killing of uh, general sagon and recirculated it as the killing of the soldiers who took out their barbarians in mind This morning, they have circulated a supposed intelligence piece that the La Republic barbarians sent to Bui were trained in France and they have come into Bui with French and Israelite soldiers and they are asking Amazonian soldiers to relocate in the next 72 hours. I have sent out a statement this morning to our forces alerting them to the fact that why they must stay at a lot why we understand the influx of la republic turks into bui they should ignore this propaganda 
peace as a desperate attempt by the occupier to have a psychological impact on them. They also use these sort of propaganda piece to get soldiers to make a mistake. Since they are unable to penetrate certain areas, they want soldiers to begin to move in panic and to give them an opportunity of ambush. So our soldiers must be conscious and our population must also be informed about these strategies. The last point, and it's, it's a point that I, I, I think I should read from my response to, to Buba, because this is very important. I always take the time to, to inform, to send messages to, to you Amazonians, so you are aware of where we are coming from, where we are, and where we are going to. But most importantly, for you to understand the trajectory, that's the journey of all liberation wars. It follows a pattern of euphoria and excitement during the uprising, and then it moves to the period of revolution, which is that of resistance and organization. And then it moves to the era of liberation, where stagnation and progress, progress coexist. And liberation wars are won during the period of the liberation. Sometimes it is not through battles you've, you've fought and won. It might be through a resistance, persistence, resilience. If you have leadership, that is able to be resilient, if you have leadership that persists, that is unbreakable, you will achieve victory. Because this is a period of intensity and a period of uncertainty. Mr. Buba claimed this morning he asks the question, where is General Efang? Where is General No Piti? Where is General Sargon? That they will continue to kill Amazonian generals until they destroy the Amazonian resistance. And he has said, if Amazonian forces do not surrender or give up their weapons and go to the DDR, they will all be destroyed. And this is my response. I would like to read it. I don't want to miss the point. General Buba must be reminded that before General No Piti, General Efang, General Sargon, there were Generals Ivo, Chacha, Kata, and others. These generals were all killed by his forces. Nearly all of these men were inaccessible in their prime. They were men who humbled Cameroon's forces, destroyed military barracks, captured and controlled territory, and even engaged in deadly foreign expeditions within the territory of Cameroon. The death of the General Ivos produced the General Efangs, the General No Pity and others, also produce new generals today. Boba must also be reminded that war is a conflict resolution method and not the conflict itself. The assumption that you can resolve the conflict by destroying the actors engaged in a particular method is a fantasy of the French Empire. The Colombians did not defeat the FARC by killing their top generals. They succumb to the reality through a negotiated settlement. White South Africa did not succeed by arrest, arresting and exiling all ANC top leaders and commanders. They capitulated to a combined strategy, including international isolation. 
Indonesia did not stop East Timorese independence by arresting its main commander and killing hundreds of others. I am aware of the strategy being pursued by Cameroon. It is called decapitation. Buba and Cameroon believe that by decapitating the resistance, they will achieve military victory and continue to perpetuate their regime of terror over Amazonia. We did not need a General Efang or General No Piti for five of its forces to be killed in Manu. It was not a General Saigon that eliminated its top lieutenant and two others in Bambui. At the moment of writing this response, the brigade commander of Akwaya and, other, and, and one other gendarme have been killed by our forces. General Buba must be reminded that you do not win a war of occupation through propaganda, bribery, corruption, and psychological cohesion. You do not deter the population when you kill their sons, display their bodies in the public square in violation of international humanitarian law. We have expelled Cameroon stooges and primary layer of governmental control, the collaborating chiefs. Give me a moment. The collaborating chiefs have either relocated to Cameroon or hiding in secure zones controlled by Cameroon. We have undermined and destroyed the activities of the secondary layer of governmental control. Unelected parliamentarians have all escaped and purely periodically come in using armor cars. Cameroon now uses military recruited spies and Yaoundé resident Ambazonian elites as its tool of propaganda and control. Lastly, let me remind Buba that the collapse of Cameroon as a state is inevitable. While junior military officers across the continent are taking over countries and rescuing their citizens from the control of the French Empire. Buba and his drunks and corrupt murderers are hiding in the bushes in Amazonia, raping, extorting, and murdering Amazonian patriots. Amazonia has prevailed over Cameroon. The foundation of our resistance is firm. Our resistance follows the natural trajectory of all liberation struggles. As I explained before, from the period of euphoria during the uprising through to the period of resistance and organization during the revolution to the liberation period where stagnation and progress coexist. We have shown to master the tactics and understand the mindset of Cameroon's actors. Violence, bribery, corruption, propaganda and time which has worked for Cameroon for 60 years, have been buried by the Amazonian resistance. That, that is my response that I'll be sending to the post for publication, and I hope they do so. I just also wish to use this opportunity to remind our people that 20th of May is the date the enemy finally showed its true colors after 11 years of masquerading under the facade of a federation it dismantled the federation and ins instituted a supposed unitary state which it collapsed in 1984. we rose so that we can provide an environment of peace opportunity and hope for the Amazonian people. We rose to defend our dignity against the barbarism of Cameroon. We rose so that we may have a country, we may be nationals of a territory, we may own a passport, we may have an, a system of education that produces assets we may have communities that are strong a health system that takes care of the sick 
we may have a legal system that guarantees the protection of the rights of the Amazonian citizens as it will be enshrined in the Amazonian constitution. We are still up in resistance to give hope to the thousands of our compatriots who are locked up in prisons across Cameroon. We are thinking of those who have died and their families. We are reminded of the trauma of the IDPs and the refugees. That is why we are up in resistance. And we have prevailed over Cameroon. As I wrote yesterday, our forces have existed for six years. Cameroon's forces have existed for 60 years. Yet, during these six years, we have been able to successfully undermine Cameroon's political legitimacy in Amazonia by discrediting its presence, undermining all legitimation tool in names of elections, and ensuring that control and governmental activities rest in the hands of Amazonian forces. We must remain defiant, unapologetically resistant continuously until these barbarians are expelled. I encourage our forces across the territory to take daring moves, to attack them wherever they show they raise their ugly heads, and to continue to collaborate in sharing intelligence, logistics, and organized communities to raise liberation tax so we continuously have a budget to refuel our machinery of defense of our homeland. God bless you all.